Hey folks, Matt Eason here, Scott Like Daddy Choice. So, um, a fairly brief video, really, uh, to talk about my um, impending uh, joining of the swinging community. That is the Indian club swingers. Now, what's an Indian club? Well, this is an Indian club, and this is another Indian club. Okay, now, uh, many people watching this channel absolutely will know all about Indian clubs. Anybody who watches London Longsword channel, so Dave Rawlings, will know Indian clubs quite well. And uh, a lot of you doing HEMA will know what Indian clubs are. So uh, you guys probably uh, don't have anything to learn from what I'm about to say. But many of you out there, because obviously there's quite a few of you watching this channel, apparently, according to the, the figures I can see, um, won't know what Indian clubs are. Now, they are not what you initially might think. They are not for hitting people. Not to say you couldn't hit someone with one. Uh, you could hit someone with anything. But they are not weapons. They are training devices. Let's put down, one down for a second. So um, these are, just to um, give a brief summary, uh, they are an exercising implement um, originally from India, um, or at least they came into Europe from, and America from India. And uh, their use was uh, essentially brought into Europe in about the 1840s, 1850s, and by the 1860s they'd gained some degree of traction I think they were pretty much introduced to America in about the 18, mid-1860s. Uh, a chap called Professor Harrison, of which there is a manual um, on the use of these and also other exercises as well, um, is out there. And there are in fact lots of manuals from the Victorian era um, from various countries, but particularly from um, Britain or the British Empire and America, um, on the use of these things. Um, and they were introduced, as I mentioned, from India. Hence their name, Indian clubs. They're sometimes known as Mugdas, uh, this being called a Mugda. Um, and so some of the manuals at the time will refer to this as a Mugda. Some will just refer to them as clubs, some as Indian clubs. And uh, they were used in India for centuries, as far as I understand it, um, particularly by wrestlers. Um, so they were essentially a weight training device. Now, they weren't used in the way that we necessarily think of doing weight training today, which is a relatively, I won't call it static, because it's not literally static, but it's quite um, limited movements we usually focus on in weight training. So you, any of you out there will be familiar, of course, with dumbbells and barbells and of course multi-gym equipment um, and obviously body weight exercises like pull-ups and push-ups and crunches and stuff like this but using the weights, using the additional weights that people do in most modern uh, weight training it's usually just focusing on one or a very small set of muscles and doing particular sets of exercise. Indian club exercise is very different from that in that it uses movements. Now, I'm not going to embarrass myself and you uh, by demonstrating these yet because I am a complete and utter noob in the world of swinging. However, I do know quite a lot of swingers and um, Dave Rawlings is one. Uh, he, if you look at his channel, he, he uses clubs and um, people like Tees Cool and even within my own fencing club, uh, the likes of Jack Butcher and Martin Wilkinson are no stranger to the world of swinging with the Indian club. Um, and uh, people like Sue Kirk out there will run um, classes at HEMA events and lots of HEMA people use these for training. Why do they do that? Well, quite simply because this is a type of weight training which um, by, by using movements actually exercises the joints in ways which are similar to a lot of the sword movements we do. So actually, if you're trying to build up functional strength or indeed you're trying to work with ailments you've got, and I have some of my own. I know some people who've got bad shoulders out there. I've had elbow issues over the years. Some people have got wrist issues. And a lot of these sort of movement exercises are, are things which are good for your joints. They strengthen up the joints. They get the joints moving. And they're very much the same sorts of uh, movements that we use in swordsmanship or wrestling or other martial arts. Um, hence, this was a popular form of exercise in India. Now, one thing I should mention, these are antique Mugdas or Indian clubs. They're actually dated to 1894 and they've got a person's name on them as well. Um, but you can buy modern made ones, of course. There are companies out there making modern ones. They don't all look like the traditional wooden ones like these that I'm holding. Some do, 
Uh, some are made of metal uh, and other materials, and some people make their own. Some uh, people who are into Indian club training make their own, even using you know concrete and a steel bar and things like this. And you can indeed use modern weights on one end of a bar and achieve a similar result. It doesn't really matter that much what the thing look, looks like, it's more its physical properties. And I should also mention, these are relatively big ones. Um, uh, boasting about the size of my Indian clubs here, but uh, most of those that you'll find are actually smaller than this, but you have to remember that most of the antique ones we find, uh, they were still used up until about the Second World War for training in um, gyms and scout groups and things like this, so uh, school gyms. Um, so a lot of them were ne not necessarily for full-grown adults. Some of the smaller clubs were actually for children um, uh, or they were just simply for for more like movement exercise than nef necessarily strength building exercise but these come in many shapes sizes and weights and these are fairly heavy ones and you do most of them are lighter than this but equally you do get some that are massive you get some massive mugders that are absolutely freaking huge I know that Dave Rawlings has one actually uh, and these are pictured in some of the old um, uh, manuals from the Victorian period and I should mention as well, if it's not been clear already, that Indian club training was beloved of the Victorian martial arts community. So the kind of people who were doing um, swordsmanship and bayonet fighting and boxing and wrestling and these things um, very often also did Indian club swinging, Indian club exercising. And it was very common during the assaults at arms, so in other words, the martial arts demonstrations, in Victorian Europe and America, not only to see bouts of foil and sabre and sabre versus bayonet and bayonet versus bayonet, sometimes mounted combat and wrestling and boxing, but also to see Indian club exercises. So it was very much part of that martial martial culture of that period. Right, I'm going to wrap it up there. Obviously, this is a, just a brief overview and introduction to what Indian clubs are and the fact that I've now got a pair. I'm going to be um, starting to exercise. I I've been meaning to do Indian club exercises for many, many years because it's so applicable, such an applicable form of exercise and strength training for swordsmanship. But additionally, because I'm no spring chicken anymore <laughs> and I'm 42 and I'm afraid that I'm starting to get ailments which are annoying me and I get injuries during training which are taking longer and longer to heal than when I was younger when I never seem to get injuries but you know you get older and you do you've got to take care of your body so I need to start doing certain exercises that are complementary to the type of combative training that I'm doing twice a week um, and to try and strengthen my body and reduce my chance of injury as I get older so Indian club exercise is perfectly compatible historically um, uh, in terms of context with the Victorian martial arts that I practice and it's a great thing to get into and in many cases the manuals that talk about Indian club exercise also talk about some of the martial arts stuff that I have been studying anyway. So I'm going to be um, learning from those books and also learning from the people who already do this stuff like people in my club and people like Dave Rawlings and Sue Kirk and people out there who do this stuff and uh, hopefully um, I will be able to bring you some more Indian club swinging videos in the future when I actually know what I'm talking about because I very much don't know how to use these at the moment um, apart from having seen other people do it but I've never really learned to do it myself. Um, I hope that's somewhat interesting and uh, hopefully we'll be looking a little bit more Indian clubs in the future and maybe it's something you might want to look into uh, and something maybe we can learn together. Um, see you for the next video. Cheers for watching folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks.